good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this YouTube video. Welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Today, just doing a walk and talk on the beach, guys. Just talking a bit about Bitcoin, blockchain, and live. Trying to zoom in out on the prize and zooming in on live, guys. And the first thing, of course, that I'm going to talk about is, did you see and read the news article yesterday um, in CNBC and many other news outlets? The news article was about the Bitcoin family, about me, my wife, my kids. And yes, that we are um, taking away more than a million of US dollar from centralized exchanges into decentralized exchanges. Now, the thing is that people really need to understand that we are not physical moving our bitcoins to a decentralized exchange. You don't need to. The thing we are doing is we are taking away the bitcoins from those centralized exchanges. So from the ones that have KYC and have all these wallets and everything in custodial service and taking it into our hardware wallets, software wallets, but all non-custodial wallets like like the trust wallet for example or the metamask or of course our ledgers and those ledgers and wallets we are connecting to decentralized exchanges that will make it able for us to still do the, the game that i love trading so it's not that we are moving them to a decentralized exchange because that's not possible a dex is a kind of a tool that you can use by connecting your wallets to that exchange now later today i'm gonna uh, drop a video about a DEX that I really believe is going to be the, one of the most successful DEXs out there in the next couple of years. And why? Because this DEX is a very safe DEX. It's backed by huge investment companies. It's backed by one of the biggest exchanges out there that I fully trust. And aside of that, it's not an automatically market-making DEX, but it's a DEX built on the order book model and you can use leverage. So do watch that video later today because that is the deck that I'm really using already at the moment, testing it from the beginning, and I really love what I see what they are building. Like this interview with CNBC guys, um, all like the other interviews, uh, they always mention some stuff that you talk about, but also leave behind some stuff. And that deck that I just talked about, that is a part, that is a part that they left out of the interview because um, it could be too commercial. Now. Like it's like shilling a deck. And I don't want to be chilling at the exit, that's why it's left out. The focus of the interview is about um, the differences between a centralized exchange and a decentralized exchange. And that is exactly what it should be about. People should be understanding now what the difference is. In a centralized exchange, like for example Binance, you send your Bitcoins to that exchange and they hold custody of your Bitcoins. If they would have an issue, a liquidity issue or any other issue, and um, they, for example, would be shut down, then your Bitcoins are gone. This happened already very early in the crypto industry in the Mount Cox. After that, it happened with Cryptopia, an exchange that I had a couple of Bitcoins on. And now again, it happened with FTX. These are all centralized exchanges. In these centralized exchanges, you still keep custody on your own Bitcoins. So yes, you are trading, but from your own wallet. You're connecting your wallet with a decentralized exchange, like the one I'm talking about all the time. The name, by the way, is Apex. You will love it. So for me, it was very important to get that message out, that people understand that FTX or Mt. Gox or Cryptopia or any other of those is not Bitcoin. And all other cryptos also is not Bitcoin. And all other crypto projects also is not Bitcoin. There is a huge difference. And centralized exchanges are no decentralized exchanges. So I'm just here to educate the people. That's what I'm trying to do. And that's why I do all these interviews with uh, CNBC and many others, because I want people to understand that when you go into Bitcoin, it's your responsibility to protect your own capital. And how do you protect your own capital? By making sure it is in your own hands. You have the custody on your Bitcoins. That's the most important part when you start in this industry. And that is again, I think what people now um, are seeing. They lost a shitload of uh, uh, cryptocurrencies in FTX Collapse, and uh, maybe also in si uh, Celsius or Luna. All of these projects just point to the fact that Bitcoin still is king. And point to the fact that not your keys is not your Bitcoins. And that is one of the most important phrases in this industry. Not your keys, not your Bitcoins. I had some expensive learning lessons as well. By the hack of Cryptopia, I lost about four Bitcoins and many other cryptos. But from that moment in 2017, I started to look for alternatives. And those alternatives came slowly during the last bull run, you know? We had, of course, Uniswap, PancakeSwap, all these swaps, and they were all doing a great job. A little bit high fees because of Ethereum, but on the other hand, you had still custody on your own Bitcoins or Ethereum. 
or any other cryptocurrency. But the important part now is people kept using centralized exchanges because of the fact that they could leverage trade. Uh, it's more simple to on and onboard from your bank account and um, officially the only way to send money from your bank account to a centralized exchange, do KYC and buy Bitcoins. But I think that the world is changing. I think there is way more possibilities. I think that now the newest decentralized exchange, uh, Apex, it's combining all the power of a centralized exchange and a DEX. So yes, you will be able to trade, but also to trade with the leverage. And that is what we all love if we uh, want to trade a little bit more risky. And the other side, it also all, uh, works with an order book model. So it doesn't have the automated market making. So make sure you uh, take a look at the video later today. Now, the other thing, I think it's very important of these DTM type exchanges is the uh, privacy because you don't need to do KYC. You just uh, create an email address, you create an account on a decentralized exchange, you, uh, you, you connect that one to one of your wallets that is anonymous and you're anonymously trading without doing KYC anywhere. So you still have full custody on your Bitcoins. I think there is not a more perfect moment for these exchanges now to start popping up more and more and more. Now, talking about the on and off red, that is the only disadvantage I see in decentralized exchange because there is no way you can send dollars to these exchanges and start to buy Bitcoins over there. The on and off ramps, in my opinion at the moment, can still be done uh, very easily with cash guys. Just find an OTC dealer next to you over the counter that means that wants to exchange cash for Bitcoins or Bitcoin for cash. It is the best way because the moment you buy your Bitcoins using a bank account, that is the moment you already did KYC and you can already trace where the Bitcoins went. So for me, the most, for me, the best way to do it at the moment is go to your ATM, cash out, buy Bitcoins with cash, send those Bitcoins to a wallet and then trade from that wallet on a decentralized exchange. In the future, I will make another cool video about that, how it works. But for now, that is, I think, enough. I hope the sound was good. I forgot to take my mic, so maybe you hear too many waves and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, sometimes in Thailand you get too relaxed and you start to forget stuff. Now, I hope that part of the decentralized exchanges is very clear now. About the Bitcoin price, um, I don't even know what the price is. I just woke up, I started to walk to the beach, uh, I do my beach walk, a little bit swimming, now do the beach and talk, and then I walk back again and I look at the price. But I think we are still in the 17k, 16 half to 17k range, and we will probably stay there for some more time and go sideways some more before that we get the next uh, pump in Bitcoin. I still believe that this was the bottom. I still believe that Bitcoin from now will slowly be crawling back again. People will slowly start to believe again in Bitcoin. Uh, slowly forget all these uh, fuck ups like FTX. Old blood will probably never come back because they were screwed in their opinion. And new blood will step into the market. And then when the bull market is going up again, then that old blood again is like, oh shit, maybe only FTX was the shit show. Maybe I should step back into again. And then they will step back in again. And then that will push the bull market again and again. And that's how it always works in these cycles. And today, of course, you will see a lot of uh, media outlets copying the article from CNBC. I think it was a really good article. Maybe the title was a little bit misleading. Um, but again, guys, it is news out there and people just need to read it. And that's why sometimes these YouTube titles, uh, CNBC titles, mass media titles, all are a little bit clickbaity. But that's why you read them. And then when you read them, you get educated so i think it was a really well written article by mckenzie guys and um, i also saw a few youtube shows mentioning us uh, again uh, one even said uh, that uh, that cute little bitcoin family yes we are very cute come meet my three puber kids and you will see that we are a very cute family <laughs> and then take my three puber kids to your house and have them there over the weekend and then let's see if you still think that we are a very cute bitcoin family they also mentioned that this family was only in bitcoin for a couple of years um I, People seem to forget that I started mining Bitcoins in 2013. People seem to forget that I started mining Dogecoins in 2014. And people all seem to forget that we already went all in to Bitcoin in 2017 and that we already started traveling the world in 2016 and that we are traveling that world already now for over six years. Completely independent of bank accounts, only using cryptocurrency. We already have no bank accounts for more than five and a half years at the moment. We don't use banks. We don't need to use banks. People seem to think that Bitcoin just is an asset that, can, that you can use to accumulate wealth to buy a Lamborghini or something, but that is not true. 
we as a Bitcoin family have been proving now in more than thousand videos on YouTube that we're spending Bitcoin daily in our lifestyle. We don't make part of the traditional monetary system anymore. We have our own monetary system called Bitcoin. We only use Bitcoin and any other cryptocurrency to live our life as we don't have bank accounts. So yes, we do OTC deals and, and exchange Bitcoins to cash. And yes, of course, we sometimes use our Bitcoin debit cards so that we can pay for stuff uh, in shops that accept Visa. But still, we don't make part of the traditional system anymore. We solely live on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And I think that is what all those media outlets should be understanding by now. We are not talking the talk like most Bitcoiners and media outlets. We are walking the walk. We are all in Bitcoin. We live the Bitcoin standard. We breathe Bitcoin. We don't, we don't just talk about it, chat about it, and make some content about it. No, we live it 24 seven, hardcore, full-time Bitcoin life. And that is what I love about my family, about my wife, my daughters, that they fully agree with it, and they fully understand what we are doing as a Bitcoin family. And more and more now, the world will understand it as well. And I think that is the beautiful part that we achieved as a Bitcoin family, and that we brought it to the mass media, through many documentaries, through many news articles, and now keeping this uh, and now keeping this place safe by pointing people in the right direction when it comes to storing your bitcoins and trading your bitcoins on a decentralized exchange from a non-custodial gold wallet. Now, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the beaches? What do you think about the talk? And please watch later today that other video that will tell you why I prefer Apex Pro above all the other decentralized exchanges out here. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow again. Bam.